first I was only familiar with modern spindles. I became curious about all of the whorls that were being found in archaeological digs. Tons and tons and tons of them, thousands of them. They were not attached to their spindle sticks. What I did was, now my curiosity was rolling, was start to study some of the earliest spindle and whorl combinations I could find. There are very, very few spindle sticks. All they mostly find are spindle whorls. This one is from, it's a copy of a spindle stick and whorl found together in 825 CE in the Viking world. I was shocked that the weight is very heavy, it's over an ounce, on top, it's made of a stone, and the stick had a peculiar property. It had a notch at the top, and almost all of the Viking spindle sticks that I've been able to locate and copy have a belly on them. It's right here. It's not directly in the middle. There are some good things about a removable whorl. One of them is, if you have a little tiny whorl and you're spinning a very, very fine yarn, you can have a very light whorl, which is good, but it might, after a while, get to be too heavy. And in that case, you can simply take it off and put a different whorl on there, different weight. These stay on because the other property of a medieval spindle is that it has a tapered shaft. The shaft comes into more or less a point at the bottom and most of the, my favorite whorls, this one is pottery, have a tapered hole. The taper jams onto the shaft and it gets a lot of contact with the shaft itself, which makes it much less likely to fall off. I can adjust what I have here. I could have a thick round whorl, which gives me a fast spin. I might want a big wide whorl, which gives me a slower spin. It spins longer, but it doesn't give me as much twist per second. It's good for beginners. But if you're starting to spin lace weight, you really want to have a whorl that is round and closer to the shaft.